<laughs> Hello and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 484. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I am Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is Tuesday, May the 12th, 2020. Um, still in quarantine here, uh, as is most everywhere, I assume, where possible. Um, and yeah, so Laura and I are still in separate places. Eventually we will record in the same room again someday. <laughs> Eventually we will uh, be there. <laughs> I told Michael that I was going to record tonight and he's like, oh cool, is Laura coming over? And I was like, no. <laughs> Laura hasn't come over for a month and some some for recording. He was like, oh. I miss okay. Michael too. So... I can't yeah. wait till we can be together and then I can hang out in your pergola. Oh, yeah. Still got work to do on that. I haven't seen it since it was a frame that was not complete. Oh, yeah. That's true. Because I haven't been over to your house since, like, March 15th. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's been some time. Um, would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Totally up to you. Uh, my... Knitting is just round and round and round, but you feel free to go first if you're ready. Mine kind of is too, but yeah, we'll get started. I'll get started, I guess. I um, I cast on something new. I actually cast on two things new, but one's not far enough along to really show, so I didn't bring it because I have a lot of other stuff to show. Um, but this is Undertone by Tin Can Knits. It's a cowl, and it comes in four sizes. There's a child small... Um, I should say like child's close to the neck and then an adult close to the neck, which is the size that I'm doing. And then they have like a child's long version and an adult long version. And so it's a long one, like one you would wrap twice or. Yeah. It's like one of the super long ones. Okay. Um, so maybe this one's probably around 20 inches around. I don't know. I can pull up the schematic. Let's do that. I was just curious. Let's not pretend like we know what's going on and actually look and see what's going on um so the difference is and i love tin can knits because they do this like they have multiple sizes and great sizes and everything they do even like cows so the child short is 21 inches around the child uh, the adult short which is what i'm knitting is 24 inches long around then there's a child long, which is 45, and then there's a ch adult long, which is 48, but it also gives you directions on how you can make that longer if you wanted to, because right. um, it's a pretty simple repeat count. And it's a slip stitch pattern, and I am using some Cormo, someone at SSK gave me a couple years ago. So it's this gray Cormo. I had actually pulled out... Um, Oh, a different Cormo, like the dark black. Who does the like, I can see it over there. The like black with the different colored undertones, like dashboard is one of them. That's the one that I pulled. Oh. Um, that you did the sweater out of? Nightshade, Harrisville. Yeah. So um, when you bought your sweaters a lot of Harrisville, you bought me a single skein. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to actually pull that to do this with, and I probably will use that but with a different color combination because it's like a almost blacky blue mm -hmm. and when i paired it with um yeah. that you couldn't see really a difference it's too dark yeah. yeah so um this is a corma that someone gave me it's like a worsted dk weight and this calls for dk weight and then what's on the right hand side is a patchwork kit it's left over from the uh, blanket that i did Oh, so okay. it's a patchwork kit that's been chain plied. So it'll gradient through this pattern. And this is the perfect pattern if you have like a gradient, gradient pack to do it with or a gradient spin. Uh, the main color in the largest size calls for 200 yards. And the size that I'm doing, that's 100 yards. So I'll be able to get two out of this. And then 180 yards for the longest size of the contrast and 90 yards for what I'm doing. So I can make two almost identical ones if I wanted to. So that's the first thing I have on the needles. And I'm using size six and I'm doing my short Licka interchangeables. 
on the 16 inch. They're um, one of the few interchangeables that I found that will do a 16 inch. And that's because they only have like a two inch tip. Yeah, like the shaft so, is relatively short. And these are the driftwood ones. I recently got the bamboo ones um, on the LYS day. I placed a order with House of Yarn. I got the new making uh, magazine and then the ply magazine and an order of the bamboo because they started making bamboo ones of these and the mm -hmm. shorts to try out. So yeah, I'm excited. And I'm excited to get another pair of interchangeables that will interchange with a system that I already have. So I will have all the cords. And the Lickas uh, sell the cords individually pretty cheap. I think it's like five bucks. So I could have all the cords plus more cords plus more cords. It'd be amazing, all the projects. And Pearl just puppy tap danced in here. <laughs> she just came through. Um, and then I have two socks on the needles. I did move uh, the Ursa Miner from this room to the other room. So it might get worked on at some point. I mean, that's progress. But I did knit on my um, socks on a plain sock. And turn the heel. So this is Long Dog Yarn, and I cannot remember the colorway name. I got it at Stitches United last year. I brought the tag in here and then promptly lost it, which is, you know, what happens in my Pretty life. Pretty typical, yeah. So I'm going to do, I think, just like a three-inch cuff on this one. So it's almost done. If I was to work on it tonight as I watch Miss Marple, I could probably finish it. But by the time we finish recording, you'll have stated three other things that you could do tonight as I well. Know. So. Oh, also, I have a knit night tonight. So yeah, that's true. I have two hours there that I could get all the things done. Virtual and, knit night. Not... Yes. Not an actual knit night. And then the last thing that I have on the needles that's currently being worked on is a sock. It's a circular sock tube that has um, been unraveled and I'm knitting on the toe. And then I'll unravel and knit the cuff and do that on the other one and then put in heels. A lot of people have been asking me to do afterthought heels again on my life. So I will probably do that. This was cranked on our Earlback Gearheart Speedster. Yes. Earlbacker. Earlbacker Gear Gearheart Speedster. Say yeah. that 20 times fast. Um, and it is Vesper yarn in the April Showers Bring May Flowers colorway. So yeah, we have a 72 stitch cylinder and then I knit the toe heels and cuffs on a size zero. I should probably go down to a double zero, but the zero works. It's a little bit larger than the sock tube gauge though. And I'm almost ready to, I think I have two more decreases and then I can, or one more decrease and then I can catch near the toe. Cool. I worked on this during, uh, my school did a trivia night. So I worked on that during that. So just a smidge of progress. So those are the three things that I'm actively working on. I cast on another cowl out of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy pack, but I just did a GD's Magic cast on to start it because that one is going to be joined in the round. Um, it's going to be similar to uh amy florence's litmus cow kind of sort of it's kind of a mashup of that and jennifer who works at miss babs her pterodactyl i think it's called pterodactyl cow i'm basically knitting a long sock in that tube that will be seen together at the end which i'm totally that's the type of knitting that i am into right now i need like not patterned knitting yeah. Just chill knitting or very simple patterns like this cowl that I'm working on now is like a slip stitch pattern. So it's a slip stitch garter. So it's pretty simple. But yeah, okay. So that's it for me. That's my blathering on. What have you been working on, friend? Um I always feel like I haven't done enough. 
But well, I'm not like I'm working from home. I know you're working from home too, but my job is much more flexible right now than your job is. I just and Mojo is hard to come by at the moment for me. Um, I need to stop using that word, but uh, motivation is hard to come by for me. So, anyhow, um, so I've got three things that I'm sort of working on. One is Nuala, which is a, uh, I've been working on it for several weeks. It's a summer top, I'm knitting it in a cotton blend. I think the original um, yarn was a linen cotton blend, but um, this is what it looks like. It's uh, the body is stockinette. It's got these um, simple lace patterned sleeve. Um, yeah. Across the top of the shoulders. It looks like you're done with it. I am almost done with it. So I got to the end and typical me, I never read ahead in a pattern. I just don't because I'm terrible that way. Um, so I got to the end and actually added an inch of length because it was slightly cropped. Um, and it's got a high low hem, but only a little bit. It's like an inch lower in the back than it is in the front. Okay. And... Once I got to the bind off, I realized that it's just, it, you just bind off in stockinette, so it'll curl at the bottom, mm. and I know that'll drive me crazy. Yeah. So I was going to go to Joanne's and do like an order ahead thing. Yeah. And get some beads that I could use for the bottom, but this is a, um, the yarn itself is, is thin because it's a tube, so it's very hollow. It's but also a chainette. Um, yeah, it is a chainette, but it's also gauge wise, like it's a worsted or Aaron. So I would have to have large beads, like Size six eight. would be, well, the lower the number, the bigger. Oh, I'm sorry. Is. That's right. So fours. Yeah. But Joanna's doesn't have anything mm -hmm. smaller than a six. So I went online and, um, I found some beads and they're being shipped to me. I think I spent like $8 with shipping. Um, but until they get here, I, I can't bind off. So, so you're going to do a beaded bind off on that. Does it get any kind of collar or anything? Yeah, it does have a little bit like a, a you pick up and then you bind off again on, for the neck. And then for the sleeves, you do just a couple of rows and then you bind off. So I don't think I'll change the collar i'm not certain about that but for the sleeves i might do garter instead of um stockinette for those few rows that you have to do um i'm not and sure you didn't about want to do garter at the bottom no i mean i could have but i already decided to do beads so yeah because well, i've done like your beads. beaded tank that you did right yeah. and i like how that lays um so I'll just pre I'll just um, string them on because this is all that's left on this particular um, skein. So I'll just start from the other end of the skein and pre string them on. Yeah. And I'll do it like a yarn over, you know, knit two together or something at the bottom. I want to look at my, my options for a beaded bind off. But I have a book that's all different beaded bind offs. Hmm, okay. And then I created one for my hope that you're welcome to use as well. That's not pre-strung though, it's placed. Well, that's not, it's not a deal breaker that it be pre-strung because, you know, it's the end of this thing. I'm willing to put in the time if I know it's going to get. Yeah, I'll send you pictures if you remind use. me of uh, different beta bind offs. So this was where I was the last time that we recorded this little yellow marker here. So I got about six inches and then, so that's mostly done. Um, hopefully it'll be done next week. Um, I also have a couple pairs of socks. So I did my um, sock washing this weekend. Yeah. And so I washed them in the washing machine with Woolite on Gentle Cycle. And I don't have an agitator. Like it, I don't have a thing that comes up in the middle. So it's just like. Yeah, it I feel like I heard that Woolite was bad for wool. I'm trying to remember where I got that information from. Well, that would be terrible. I feel like that's a Mama Linneman fact. Well, I'll have to contact her after yeah. we record. Well, 
when I did this, I found a couple pairs of socks that need to be mended. So this is a pair of socks that Froggy Monkey, who used to record knitting in circles. Amy. She, yeah. So this sock has got um, a hole where it's worn a little bit there with this stitch pattern. And then the other one, there's a couple of spots where the slip stitches have, have pulled. So I need to go in and fix those. And then the other is a pair, um, I think this is the War of the Worlds color from Desert Vista. No, I don't think that's what this is. This is something else. I can't remember what it is. But um, it's just popped a stitch there in the middle. Yeah. So it looks like to... it got caught on a nail or something. Yeah. So I need to, um, to fix that. My brother-in-law sent me a picture of the first socks that I knit for him. So this has to be, I don't know, they've been married quite a bit. Um, and I think they're Laura Neal socks. And he oh, said uh. the heel, he wears them all the time and he's worn out both heels and it's his favorite heel ever. And I have no idea what the heel is. And Beck doesn't know either. I'll just send you the pics and see if you remember. Does it have like that garter strip along the side? No, but it like pops out weird. Here, let me see if I can find it in my phone real fast. Okay. While we're talking. Maybe a viewer can remember. Yeah. Um, let me search for my sister. Do you remember what That's... the yarn is? Because we could just search the show notes. That's, I cannot, and it's driving me nuts. Also, my phone's acting weird lately. But that's a whole nother story. Okay. So. This is the broken sock. It's definitely broken. And then both of them look like that. She sent me two pictures. But this is the heel. And it looks like there's a different line of decreases. Like it decreases in two different spots at different rates. Which is what makes me think it's a Laura Neal heel. Is it like two V's sort of stacked on top of each other? Mm, maybe. I'm thinking it so might be Total Girl across. has that double it's not the double gusset because the decreases are on the heel themselves huh you'll have to send me that picture yeah we could you could actually insert it into the show notes instead of me look there's another one of brokenness Aww. i'll send all three to the to you so you can show them on the show notes okay um yeah i think it's a laura neal heel i'll have to but like Sometimes with my show notes, they are not as detailed as they should be as to, like, whose pattern it is. Yeah, but you may not necessarily mention it in the show notes, but usually you'll talk about it. I'm thinking so. that. But I'm thinking it might be, like, a Laura Neal. I don't know. It's an interesting heel and one that I haven't done since. And I think I gave them to him because I didn't like the way it fit in my foot. Yeah. And it might be socks that rock yarn. Because typically I knit his socks out of socks that rock. I, I knit uh, medium weight socks for him, like what would be a sport weight, because he's got feet that are like size 12 women's mm -hmm. and kind of square. So like 10 inches around. Um, so And so does my sister. They actually wear the same size shoe. Yeah. So if one doesn't, if it doesn't work for me, and it's too large, usually they go to back and mat. Yeah. That's how that works. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so you have mending to do. I do. Um, and I was going to work on it up here, but my little darning mushroom that looks like a marital aid, I need a, um, like a rubber band or a hair tie to go around it, and I forgot to bring one up. So oh. I'll work on it downstairs. Did you want me to order the... Um... I need to, I still need to look because she has buttons I want to look at. Yeah, Katrinkle, you guys uh, who don't know, because Leslie and I talk to each other all the time, uh, has a new darning loom that we want to get to try out. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, aside from those two things, I picked up my um, Starboard Rock, which is a fingering white sweater that's sort of a cross between The Weekender by Andrea Mowry and Boxy by... Hohi Locatelli, and it's knit out of Ice Skating Party by um, Amy Florence, or yeah. Stranded. And it's in her, I think it's called the Merino Nylon Base now, but it was called Oasis. 
And so I picked it up and I was like, I put it down because it was just stuck in it forever in the round. And I was like, well, I should probably measure and see like how far away I am from the yeah. divide for the sleeves. And I picked it up and I was less than an inch away from see? the sleeve divide. There but you go. Then I looked at the measurements and I was like, well, you know, is the sleeve divide where I would want it? Like, yeah. Wise? And I needed to add like an inch and a half ish. It was slightly shorter than what I would want it to be. So, um, this is this little white marker right here. Mm -hmm. That was, um, when I picked it up. So I needed, I need to get to just under three inches from that marker. So I'm about an inch from it now. So very doable. Um, if I work on it this week to yeah. get to the point where it's divided for the sleeves at that point. And then it'll just zip along. Yeah. And I think actually what I'm going to do, um, instead of picking, so it's divided at the sleeve divide, you work the front and then you work the back, they're identical. And then you steam it across the top. Um, and then you pick up for the sleeves and knit downward. But I think I haven't decided yet, but I kind of think I might want to knit the sleeves from the bottom up and then maybe pick up and knit down, you know, an inch and then Kitchener and I'm in the round instead of having to constantly flip around my okay. whole body of my sweater. But I haven't completely decided on that. Um, we'll see. I'm not going to get to that point anyway in the next you week. You can so. start and then um, you can start with them knit top down and then if it irritates you then yeah. start them from the bottom up. But, um, so I'm alternating these two different skeins. One of them is a little bit lighter than the other one so I'm alternating every two rows. It's good practice to do that anyway with hand dyed yarn. Yeah, or any um, yarn really. So well, I don't worry about it for big stuff like if it's like a cascade or or a regia or yeah like a huge dye house then i don't worry so much about it but if it's anything hand dyed regardless of how big the company is then yeah i would i would alternate just to be safe um and that's it that's basically all i've worked on this week i don't have any spinning but i know you do i do so i um it's not wound off. I'll start with that. But I did finish my Into the World. I just finished it before we started recording. Uh, the Sealy Court, which is a Rambouillet. I'm hoping for really good yardage because I've been plying this for four hours. So that usually is a sign that I'm going to get decent yardage. Um, so that is the Sealy Court. And so as soon as we finish recording, I am going to wind this off and give it a bath. And it's raining outside, so it'll have to hang out in my bathtub in my guest room to dry. So that is the first thing. This is an Acre Works bobbin for the Hansen, because I apply typically using the Wooly Winder on the Hansen. I should clean this bobbin, the Wooly Winder, and it's a little bit dirty. But yeah, um, it's probably a good practice to give your bobbins a bath every once in a while. If there's one that can take a bath, yeah, like a plastic say, bobbin. Yeah, on the materials, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I started doing Jillian Marino's sample along two. So the first skein is an end to end skein. So you take bits and bobs and you just spin them randomly and then just ply those two together. So it's a super happy skein. It's around 3.2 ounces. I was aiming for four, but I got 3.2. This was seven of the into the world bits and bobs for each side. And it's 155 yards. So I've tried to spin these thicker. This one is probably around a DK weight to a worsted in spots. I'm not good at spinning. Um, oh, I skipped over finished objects. I'll go back to that in a second. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm not great at spinning um, thicker yarns. So that's something that I'm trying to work on. And then the second one is marled singles. And I was so busy talking to Sharon, I really over twisted my singles. And this one definitely is more bulky. And this is 4.2 ounces and it's 78 yards. And yeah. I like to spin, it's marled singles that then are plied together. Um, I'd like to spin another one of these and make slippers, I think. Because it is over spun. 
So slippers that get some wear and tear would be a good use for this because there is a lot of twist in it. It's hmm. pretty so like it. similar to like a Rasta type weight. Yeah, by Mello Brigo. Mm -hmm. You can tell by the fact that it was over four ounces, but it was under a hundred yards. Like that's a good indicator that it's nice and thick. Yeah, it's a super bulky. And then I started spinning the third yarn. And the first bobbin is end to end. And then you ply that with a braid that you've split in half of top. So I will, I'm working on that right now. I'm using a braid that Jessie sent me when she sent me the um, wheel that I got from her, the wreaths. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a merino, but it's just kind of a um, interesting braid combination. I think they'll match up really, really fun. All right, finished objects. I finished my little boxy. Look at those tiny little sleeves. By Hohi Locatelli, I know. They're actually a little bit tinier than they should be, and I'm not certain. I guess my row gauge was off, but they have a super stretchy bind off. Yeah. They'll stretch. This is the three to six month size, I think. Actually, six month size, but it's a boxy, so it could really, I could fold it in and then it's a smaller. <laughs> size but um this is going to go in my gift bin we have one of our knit group is pregnant so i'm gonna put that away it's a very chic baby knit yeah i think it's fun it's just the yarn is so pretty i want to knit these out of all of ponky's yarn <laughs> but it's a great use for i had probably three grams left when i was done oh so it's a great use for a skein of sock yarn that you think is too pretty to put on your feet or that you want to do something special with or you have someone because it's sized up to like an eight-year-old size i think do i have that length no um if i did i would tell you what oh yeah, yeah i do have it at length let's see so that's the past laura did a great job it actually goes up to 12 years so if you had a couple skeins of a special sock yarn, you could definitely do it up to a 12-year-old size. That's fun. But yeah, I'm super happy with that. So that was what I finished. And then I also finished a secret test knit for an upcoming book that I can't show you guys. But it's nice to be like... Because this weekend I was like, man, I haven't done any crafting. I haven't finished anything. I feel like I'm not getting stuff done. Yeah. But once we record and I see everything sitting here, but honestly, I didn't finish the little boxy till Sunday. And then the spinning, I just all plied in the last two days. So yesterday and today. So that's why it seems like there's more because there is more. But yeah, um, so I have the next two sample along spins to do. And then I am going to spin some fun, fun braids that have come that I bought from Maryland vendors. So, yeah. That is it for me. What have you been reading? Um, so, I've been reading the... I forget what it's called. I think it's called the Prophecy Series by Tove Falls Ford. I'm on the third one, which is the one that just came out, um, called Irgun. So, this one is sort of a... Um, fantasy-ish. Uh, there's a kingdom and there's wars and there's spirituality in some ways and um, it's very it's very well written um, and I'm enjoying it. And then I'm alternating that with Need for Speed which is a male-male <laughs> romance. That it, It's the second in a series with um, I love Frank. Uh is it it's navy fighter pilots i think yeah yeah oh frank's the author um she and brooke blaine uh, co-authored this series but i do like ella frank as an author a lot yeah and then i finished listening to wow no thank you by samantha irby this is her third book um and it's all sort of um comedic essays about her life and observations and that sort of thing so now I'm listening to uh, the 
last book in the Verani Tales of Verania series. Um, oh. I actually had bought it a long time, like when it came out, but I haven't. I've read the book, but I haven't actually listened to the audio. Uh, the audio. So uh, are they all read by the same author? Yeah. Did, okay, by the same Michael Leslie yeah. person, I should mm-hmm. say. Cool. Yeah. I'm so... listening to the first one. So oh, okay. Lightning struck heart. Um, Gary just got his horn back. Spoiler. Oh, so, good for Gary. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's that, and I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing, and I've been failing at the stock market. Like, I don't hard- play the stock market. Oh, Carrie has 300 bell socks today. If you need oh, to sell. Oh, does she? I was just gonna say, my friend from work, he texted me earlier and said that his bells are going for or his um, turnips are going for two ninety four. Okay, his are three hold on, I'll be a liar if I these are things that we text each other about apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Very life. important things like fake economies in video games where you buy and sell turnips, but you only have a week to sell them before they go bad. Three seventy one. Oh wow. You should text her. I will. Might actually make some money because I bought them at like a hundred and three. Yeah, they seem to go for around a hundred, right? Yeah. I never wake up. Well, I never go down Animal Crossing early enough on Sunday to deal with it because she's gone by noon. Well, she was there late when I was on Sunday when I was um, on because she was there at sunset. Okay. So maybe it changes. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. It. <laughs> I just have to remember, like, there's a whole thing, and this is, my friend from work um, sent this to me, but there's a whole thing, uh, like, calculator. Yeah. Uh, where, you can, where you can track. You track, like, and so some, there are people who have time traveled, and by that, I mean, they've, they've changed the time in their Nintendo you yeah, like I need console. to fix mine because I altered mine for by an hour so Leslie could s- come sell turnips last week. Oh, <laughs> so I need um, to fix it back. Yeah, but there are people who have time traveled and they've time traveled enough so they've gotten every single possible outcome for your turnips and whether if, whether you'll make money, you just have to track, you know, like what you bought them at and what the price is each day. But like, see, mine are terrible. Mine are doing terrible. This week, I think part of it has to do with the rating of your island. Oh, so yeah. Mine was only a two star island, and then it came up to a three star, and then it went back down to a two star because my villagers were cranky about how many trees I had. And then now it's back to a three star. Well, that's good. And I'm buying a bunch of useless some crap trees. and putting it out. I'm letting all my trees grow fruit so I can get rid of some yeah. that are like native fruit trees without having to use fruit to get rid of them to determine. Yeah. So that's happening on my island. I got five stars this week. Oh, so I know I had a little special. celebration. Um, so I'm now a fi- I'm currently a five star island. Maybe not today because I haven't picked up tree branches and such. Like, you can only have 15 items on the ground. Oh, really? And that affects it, too. I didn't know that. There you go. I didn't know that until Isabel yelled at me for 10 days in a row. Like, oh. you've got too much stuff laying around. And I was like, what do you mean? And stuff that's on, um, like, if you create a table and put goods on there to use, like, near a workbench, that counts towards that 15 items, too. Like, so I put a table near my workbench that I would put, like, iron on and oh so you would have to wood. go into storage and stuff okay yeah so well i have workbenches spread across my yeah island. i have different places with workbenches um so that i don't have to worry about because my house is kind of close to um tom nook's little area um anyway <laughs> so much animal crossing stuff but yeah uh so that's exciting but now i'm kind of like nah, where do i go from here because I'm a five star island, but I still have stuff to do and make. Yeah, fun. and like every month there are different fish and bugs that come out yeah. that you have to catch. Um, 
Yeah, I caught one of those yesterday. Like one that's like deep sea, um, prehistoric. Oh, the one with the sea. Um, yeah, that col- one. Colossanth or something. Yeah, that one. I yeah, caught that I just, yesterday. I just caught that yesterday or the day before as well. So, so but yeah, you got like a marlin a- and a tuna, which I don't have because I went. Through yeah, I don't that. have any sharks though. I've never yeah, I don't have shark. any sharks, but it's not like they're not here for me yet. Like they don't come until June for me, because okay. it depends on what hemisphere that you're in. Because there's two different there's oh, a northern okay. and a southern hemisphere, yeah. so you get stuff at different times of the year. That's interesting. Yeah. Anyway, I probably um, know more I... about the hemispheres of Animal Crossing than I do about the hemispheres in <laughs> Earth. <laughs> so where you live? Where I live. Uh, so I finished doing, I finished reading Unlocking English Le- Learner's Potential, and that was a really good, if you're looking, if you're an English teacher or any kind of teacher, any kind of teacher, and you're looking for a good PD book about um, helping your English learners, that would be a good one. I highly recommend it. It had a lot of great charts, like check off charts. So as you're planning, you can say, okay, am I thinking about language acquisition am I thinking about prior knowledge am I thinking about culture and other aspects that would influence learning so I like that a lot and then um, I'm re-listening to Lightning Struck Heart which is a male male fantasy that's the same series that Leslie's doing and then I finished reading because there's only two a cozy adult mystery series which is male male called Secrets and Scrabble it also has pirates but that's not in the name of it (laughs) <laughs> so uh no adult relationships like no sex i guess there's this rule with cozy mysteries that there can't be like graphic murder and there can't be sex mm. like it's the unspoken rule of cozy mysteries okay so it's a cute little cozy mystery series i enjoyed it it was you know worth the three bucks that i spent on each book um, i think the first one was on kindle unlimited i don't know if it still is but yeah, it's fun. Josh Lanyon, the author, has written some other stuff as well that I've read. Yeah, I think so. I've read some Josh Lanyon, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, yeah, just fun little stuff. I'm still doing Instagram Lives. I did one with Jillian today, which was lots of fun. We went over what we bought at Maryland. And really, like, what's arrived at my house in the last three weeks <laughs> is what we went over. Because there was an LYS day in there. And then Maryland... And then just some people that I wanted to support. So, yeah, that was fun. Um, Amy Florence will be back Friday. On Thursday, I'm doing Sock Machine, I think I said, again, because some people wanted to see the Sock Machine again. Um, So, yeah, that'll be happening. And then we'll finish off the bind off on the um, Sock, the Socks on a Plane Sock on Monday. And then that will be over. And I'll get some other guests which will be fun vogue knitting live uh virtuals going on right now too which is fun jess Mm. is taking some stuff so i think that's it for me i've been a fail at darning although i did weave in some ends on things that were like five years old like mittens that i never wove in ends on yeah, I when I was hanging up my socks to dry uh, this weekend, I found like three pairs of socks where the ends have been woven in, but I never trimmed them. So oh. there's like two feet of you know yarn. I have from some the end. here that yeah. ends were never woven in. <laughs> like I've worn them for like three years, but the ends were never woven in. So I've got to do that on those. It's good thing I weave in an end while I'm waiting for Animal Crossing to boot up. Because the boot time is about as long it's as it takes ridiculous. me to weave in a yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I also bought Just Dance for my Switch. So, next oh. time you come over, whenever that is, <laughs> you'll have to bring some remotes and we will dance like it's 1999. You'll be so much better at it because you'll have practice. Yeah, I haven't even pulled it out yet. It's still in the garage in a target bag with my cookies oh i forgot those cookies were out there that's exciting in quarantine my quarantine bag from friday but it's tuesday now so hopefully all, safe. all the things well now they're saying like the virus could live on plastic for up to a week but i can't wait a week for things like groceries i just wash my hands a lot yeah 
after I touch stuff. Because the salad mix that I bought from Kroger, let's see, I bought it on Friday. What day of what day was Friday? So mm-hmm. I did a grocery pickup on Friday, which was the eighth, and it expired on Sunday. So I only had like two days to eat it, which is very Not short. Deal. Yeah. But it all worked out. I enjoyed my tangerine salad mix. That does sound good. It was good. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Now I'm just talking about random stuff. Oh, Stash Dash. That is something we need to talk about. So we haven't had any rule changes requested. So, okay. we, But we do need to um, film a Stash Dash video. Let me see when I said that would happen. Uh, stash Dash rule change discussion. So no rule changes have been requested. Um, so I'm going to actually just close that thread. And then um, we'll do a Stash Dash video this week sometime. We want to do it before the 18th so we can get it up on the 18th because Stash Dash starts on the 22nd. And it's good mm-hmm. to know rules ahead of time. Although if you're curious as for the rules, if you go into the Knit Girls group on Ravelry, in the top upper corner, there's pages. It says six pages. And the 2019 Stash Dash rules will be the same as the 2020 Stash Dash rules. So you can take a look at them there. Since there were no requests, um, I'll go back through and add some clarifications if we need to. But yeah, the timeline is different, but the actual rules are the same. Okay. So can you count things that you finish before May 22nd? No. All those things. Yeah. Yep. So dates will change, but the rules are the same. Awesome. That made it super easy. I don't know why there were no... Maybe we've hit, like, the sweet spot on Stash Dash rules. Maybe people just didn't realize that thread was there. I don't know. <laughs> Either I way, those going things with could it. Be <laughs> but we're gonna roll with it. Yeah. I think it'll all be good. Yeah. So, I think that's about it. Yeah. So, like Laura said, we'll record an episode, a uh, Stash Dash Rules episode at some point this week and get that up. Um, I'm going to work with Laura and we're going to choose a uh, craft for the fail along. Yeah. So that information should be coming up soon. And that's for our Patreon supporters. Yeah. Thank um, you so much if you support us on Patreon. Yeah. We, we genuinely appreciate it. Um, and then, as always, the virtual knit night is the last Sunday of the month. So that's still a couple weeks away. That will be on the 31st, actually. It's the last day of the month this year. So, yeah, it's two weeks and a smidge of time. Man, May's not going as fast as April went, but I say that now, and it'll be like, boom. Yeah, Memorial Day is in like a week and some. Yeah. I, I got a text from the school system today that, like, this was the last week of graded work, and I'm like, oh, my God. Yep, that is accurate, because the following week, um, the kids were only supposed to go, like, two days, Mm. and it was exams. Yeah. So, yeah, and then the teachers were supposed to close out, but, like, they moved up all of my, like, closeout procedures, so um, I had to email in, like, reports and stuff by tomorrow. They're already done. Yeah. Um, I emailed them out yesterday, but like usually they're not due to like June twelfth. But they're yeah. like while you're there, um, stuff like textbook stuff that has to be reported to the state. So I went into work yesterday, and also checked in a bunch of books, which was nice. And I'm gonna go in tomorrow before um my day of Zoom meetings. So that'll be fun too. All right, you guys don't care about my schedule, but I don't um, care about your schedule. I mean, there's that. That does mean that starting the following week, I should be able to do lives again on Wednesdays. Maybe the week after that. But by the end of May, I should be able to do, like, Monday through Friday lives. So that's cool. 
That sounds freaking exhausting. I don't know how you do it. But... <laughs> when it's fun, people, like when I'm talking to other people, it's lots of fun. And I do the lives. I leave the comments on. Someone asked me if I could remove, like, the interaction between the people watching. And I get that that's annoying and it covers the screen some point. But, like, that is why I do lives. It's right. to answer people's questions and have that interaction. Because I can film things in my house and I can actually subtitle them if I film them in my house but the lives you can't subtitle because they're live yeah. um but anyway kino nits is also doing lives and she's putting hers on youtube afterwards but i wouldn't ask that of you that's a lot of work on your end i mean i could do it once a week but you'd have to download them yeah i could do that but then i'd have to send them all i don't know that my phone's i have an older phone and i don't you think it has the space could we'll see I think and the interviews and stuff, uh, I mean, you get to catch, people can catch them for 24 hours if I mean, they want. That's I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Maybe also like my lives are me messing up a lot. So <laughs> like I messed up the heel of the sock when I was doing that the other day. It's real. I mean, I everybody know. does it. So it's super real. But like from a tutorial standpoint, I feel like there are yeah. better tutorials out there. Well, whatever yeah it is what it is i know you miss me saying that oh so much <laughs> leslie will point out in a heartbeat phrases that you use over and over and over again well not in a heartbeat because usually i'll have noticed it and inner monologued about it for <laughs> days or weeks before i mention it but um with Laura, I don't, like, my fine. courtesy threshold is much lower. Like, <laughs> That's one of mine that I use a lot, and I check Leslie for understanding quite <laughs> yeah, a bit. You do check me for understanding a lot. <laughs> but, I mean, that's, I mean, it's good. It's part of your personality, which makes you a good teacher. But, it, yeah, sometimes I'm like, I, I understand what it means. I do, I promise. <laughs> but sometimes but. I also need to, one thing that I'm working on as a teacher is leaving that, like, empty space. Mm -hmm. for the kids to fill it versus yeah. me filling it right so that's something that i've been working on the last year because i will just talk all day if people let me but i gotta let space for other i mean people. That, that's a natural instinct is to fill the silence with anything just anything yeah so, right. but i need to get better at not filling silence sometimes oh. yeah it is what it we, is we could all stand to get better at that. <laughs> <laughs> all right i will let you go <laughs> all right we will talk to you guys later have a good week bye, bye all. Paul.